In this video, we will be learning about the windows and tools you see within Rhino interface. You will be introduced to the Rhino software and by the end of this video, you will get familiar with the Rhino interface. Let's get started. Rhino as a software has seen widespread adoption in last few years. Not just that, it is used by a variety of disciplines like architecture, product design, automobile design, etc. So, Rhino is a tool that you can use wherever you may want to. I personally recommend Rhino also because it has a lot of similarities to AutoCAD. If you have used AutoCAD software before, the whole idea of command line operation is going to feel very familiar. With lots of commands being identical, the transition even for me as a beginner was pretty easy. So, while exploring the software today, try making those mental references to a software like AutoCAD or SketchUp to help you remember better. So, let's open the software. On opening Rhino, you might see a lot of tools. But don't worry, it's pretty easy to get started. Once we open Rhino, we see a welcome screen. Here, you can see four important sections. Recent, News, Tips, and New. The recent section is like a shortcut to quickly open a model you've been working on. News and Tips provides us a link to the latest news and tutorials in relevance to Rhino. New provides us the option to choose a default template. For example, to create an architectural project, we may want to choose between meters and millimeters. For a product or a furniture design project, a millimeter template would work best. For construction drawings, I might select a feet and inches template. Depending on the scale of the project, Rhino provides an option to choose between small object and large object. I will be selecting the millimeter template here. We see a Rhino screen which looks like this. Rhino interface is very well organized in sections for different uses which helps in a good workflow. Why do you come to Rhino? To model your ideas, right? And how do you model things? By using various commands. So as you will see, Rhino is a command based program, which means that for every action you perform, there is a certain command. Now there are three ways to access those commands. The first way is through menu bar. The second way is through the command line. And the third way is through toolbars respectively. So, the first thing you'll see all the way on the top is the menu bar. And here you'll find the first way to access those commands. Let's have a look at menu. The menu is divided into following sections. The operational section, which consists of file, edit, view. The primary section, which helps you in creating objects. This includes curve, surface, sub D, solid, mesh. All these are different Rhino objects that help you in modeling. Then there are modification tools like dimensions and transform. And finally, additional sections which are categorized as per their functions. These are tools, analyze, render, panels, and help. Now, the second way to give or access commands in your workflow is through the command line. This is one of my favorite and of course fastest way to give a command. The command section has two sections within it. Command history window. This displays the previous commands. To put it in a better way, it's a constant log of what you are doing in your project. You can extend and check it out like this. Second one is the command prompt. Command line is used to basically type commands, click command options, type coordinates, type distances, angles or radii, type shortcuts and view command prompts. You want a circle to be drawn, start typing that in. The autocomplete helps us find what we are looking for. I am sure you must have noticed that the command prompt also starts recording a log of your recent commands. If you haven't, right click on the command line to view recently used commands. Now let's get to our third way of giving commands. And that is through the toolbar. The most frequently used toolbar groups are Standard, Set, set View, Display, Visibility and Transform. When I started to learn Rhino, 
I used to use the toolbars as it contains graphical icon for initiating commands. This is easy to understand as a beginner. Rhino toolbar contains buttons that provide shortcuts to commands. You can float a toolbar anywhere on the screen or dock it at the edge of the graphics area. Rhino starts off with the standard toolbar group, dock above the graphics area and the main toolbar as the sidebar on the left. So I don't know if you've noticed, but things are pretty well organized on the toolbar also. The top 5 rows of the toolbar contains the basic editing tools. The row below that contains surface related tools and 3D modeling tools. After which comes the operational and curve tools. When it comes to frequency of use, the order comes pretty close. Now let's talk about the canvas of Rhino, where all the magic happens. Yes, the viewports. A viewport is basically a window through which you're looking at your project. Currently, you will be seeing these four views through these ports. Perspective, Top, Front and Right. You can select a viewport by simply clicking in the window. You will see that the viewport gets highlighted and it becomes the current working space. If you want to maximize the viewport, simply double click on the name and it will display it on this entire screen. Apart from the viewport, your interface has three more sections that you will be using a lot. And these are the object snap control, the status bar, panels on the right. The O snap controls when switched on or off can control which part of the geometry of our cursor gets snapped to. The status bar here displays important information like current coordinate systems, etc. That brings us to the tab panels. The panels are docked on the right side of the Rhino interface. However, they can be dragged and floated anywhere like this. Panels that you will work with in this 101 course are Display, Layers, Help, Named C planes, Notes, Properties, Web Browser. No need to memorize all this. We will learn how to use this with examples in our lesson on 2D drafting. That brings us to the end of understanding the Rhino interface. Comment below the similarities you find between Rhino and AutoCAD. Go check out the next video to learn more about navigation within Rhino. Subscribe to the channel to get notified for more exciting tutorials.